Hi folks, this is Linear Algebra Quiz 17. We're given a linear transformation from P2 to P2. So we're taking a second degree polynomial and transforming to another second degree polynomial. We're asked to find the eigenvalues of the transformation and a basis for each of the corresponding eigenspaces. And then we're asked if T is diagonalizable. Okay, so how do we find the eigenvalues of t? We find a matrix representation for t and find the eigenvalues of that. So let's let x be the standard basis we've been using for p2, t squared, t, and 1. I'm going to make the matrix representation for t from x to x. So that means I'm going to take t of t squared express that as a column vector in x-coordinates. That'll be the first column of my matrix. Then t of t, express that as a column vector in x-coordinates. And lastly, t of 1, express that as an x-vector. So this is the standard way we get a matrix representation for transformation. So let's look at t of t squared. So t squared a is 1, B is 0, C is 0. So I'm going to have negative 17 T squared. I get nothing there, plus 30. If I write this as a column vector in X coordinates, it's negative 17, 0, 30. I take T of T. A is 0, B is 1, C is 0. So b is 1, I get negative 3 t squared minus 2t plus 6. And as a column vector in x-coordinates, it's minus 3 minus 2, 6. And last but not least, I look at t of 1. a is 0, b is 0, c is 1. I get negative 9 t squared plus 16, which corresponds to negative 9, 0, 16. I put all these together and I get my matrix representation A. First column, negative 17, 0, 30. Second column, negative 3, negative 2, 6. Last column, negative 9, 0, 0, 16. Now, uh, does that matrix look familiar? This is the matrix we had from checkpoint quiz 16. So we already know the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of that matrix. Uh, so the eigenvalues of the matrix will be the same as the eigenvalues for T. And the eigenvectors we had, the linearly independent eigenvectors we had, are going to correspond to the uh, basis for each of the eigenspaces. Okay, so this was our matrix A from checkpoint quiz 16. We had for lambda equals negative 2, that was our one eigenvalue, we got two linearly independent eigenvectors. We had negative 1, 5, 0, and negative 3, 0, 5. So, what do these correspond to? Well, I'm interpreting these as x coordinates, negative 1, 5, 0 is going to correspond to negative t squared plus 5t. Negative 3, 0, 5 would correspond to negative 3t squared plus 5. So this is a basis for the eigenspace e negative 2. For lambda equals 1, that was the other eigenvalue of a, and hence an eigenvalue of t. We had one linearly independent eigenvector, and that was negative 1, 0, 2. So once again, interpreting that as x-coordinates, I have negative t squared plus 2. So this is a basis for E1. And what I encourage you to do is to take each of these polynomials, plug them into the transformation, and actually show that they are eigenvectors to the corresponding eigenvalues. So for example, if we take t of negative t squared plus 5t, what we should get is negative 2 
times negative t squared plus 5t. And sure enough, if we plug in a is negative 1 and b is 5, if a is negative 1, I get 17 minus 15, which would give me a 2t squared. I'd have minus 10t. And here I would have negative 30 plus 30, which is 0. So I would be getting out 2t squared minus 10t, which sure enough matches this. And you can do the same thing here with eigenvalue negative 2 and check here that that's eigenvalue 1. In other words, if you take t of this vector, you just get this vector back. Okay, last but not least, is t diagonalizable? Well, t is diagonalizable means that t can be represented by a diagonal basis, or by a, sorry, diagonal matrix. And that's true if and only if the domain, which is P2, has a basis consisting of eigenvectors of T. So is T diagonalizable? It sure is. So T is diagonalizable. because the set y consisting of eigenvectors negative t squared plus 5, negative 3t squared plus 5, excuse me, negative t squared plus 5t, negative 3t squared plus 5, and negative t squared plus 2 is a basis for P2. Now how do we know that's a basis for P2? Because we know that these two polynomials are eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalue lambda equals negative 2 and this guy is an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals negative 1. Since these <coughs> since this is an eigenvalue different than this one, I know this is linear and independent of these two. Finally, I know that P2 is dimension 3, and since I have three vectors that are linearly independent, it must be a basis. Now something you might want to do in the privacy of your own home is to get a matrix representation for T using that basis Y, and you will find it is the same diagonal matrix we had <clears throat> and checkpoint quiz 16. That'll do it for quiz 17.